I'd like to tell you a story, something that happened to me. At the end of February, I was running at the Abbey House in Glastonbury, a, the second in my training and transformation program of retreats, which is the first time I've run this program. It's been great. It's for people who have been to one of my mystery experience retreats and want to train with me so that they can share these eye to eye connection exercises and the paralogical philosophy and run introductory events or integrate it with their own work. I'll, I'll talk more about that program later because that's worth doing a vlog on on its own, but that's not what I want to tell you. I, m my wife, Debbie, who I love immensely, uh, has been suffering from kind of various infections and things which she hasn't been able to throw off. And what came out from that was that she had a uh, ultrasound, and by complete, just because of that, they found a different problem, a completely separate problem, which was a a growth on the ovary, one of the ovaries, her ovaries. So in the background to preparing for the retreat, there was obviously all the concern that comes with someone you love uh, having a situation like that. We found out it didn't look like it was cancerous. It looked fine, um, but nevertheless was potentially dangerous and should be removed. And they, the NHS in our wonderful country, uh, for which I'm immensely grateful and proud, uh, got us in very quickly, did a fantastic job and said, OK, here we go, and came up with a date for her operation, which was the same day as the retreat started. So we tried and changed it, uh, but that would have meant delaying it a very long time. And we were told, look, this is a straightforward keyhole operation. Um, she in and out on the same day. Um, obviously she wouldn't be able to come to the retreat if she wanted to, but she could just recuperate at home with some friends looking after her and it looked doable. So on the Friday morning, I was up at a really, really early hour to get Deb into the hospital and be with her for seven o'clock in the morning for this operation and to be with her throughout the whole of the day. Uh, ready to be at the retreat to start early evening. And as happens, you know, it went right to the line. Um, it was okay because at this retreat, this is people who come before. Many of them had come many, many people had come many times to the retreat. So they knew my work. Um, they knew me. They knew the place. So I didn't need to be there to welcome them. They knew each other many times, many people. So it's a real community spirit. They'd all been together for the first of the training retreats as well. So I wasn't worried. Uh, and I got there by the skin of my teeth. I was a little bit late because everything at the hospital took quite a long time. But Deb seemed fine. Really, really good. Came around from the anaesthetic. She was excellent. The operation was a success. I brought her home, I left her with my daughter and my friends calling in and her, her, her dad lives at the end of our garden. All good. <clears throat> Next day, uh, not so good. <laughs> um, the symptoms, not being able to hold anything down, not feeling at all well, um, being very sick, all sorts of issues. And I've got a retreat. And that was... And I'm exhausted because I've had a full day the day before. So what was interesting was to feel very stretched between these two worlds. Uh, I mean, in one way, I was foolish probably to get myself into that situation. Over-optimistic. There's a, a fault I can own up to readily. But... What I could see was that because I had the support at home, I could move between this stretching that I could feel um, that you may be with familiar with in other situations. This stretch between, on the one hand, this concern and uh, for Deb and wanting to be with her and the practical aspect of that and the emotional 
turmoil of that and then going to the retreats and taking responsibility for all these other people wanting to impart so much to them very inspiring just heart opening big experience deep awake just very intense very present in the now uh, both times really uh, having to be very present in the now in very different ways and it went really well actually and then on saturday night i came back um, I left everyone at the retreat setting up for our ceremony because they could do it themselves. That's what I was training people to do. So that felt like, OK, I'll go back and check out how Deb is. But Deb wasn't at all well. In fact, she was really bad. And the friends who were looking after her were on the verge of calling an ambulance. And when I examined her, I saw that she was bleeding from her wounds. And then I, I knew we should call an ambulance. Uh, so we're now into a whole nother level of this stretching because I realised I was going off in, in an emergency ambulance to the hospital with Deb and I had to send a message um, with my gorgeous 14-year-old daughter who a lot of the people know because she often comes up to the retreats um, up to the Abbey House, which is where we run them, very close to where I live and tell this group, Tim's not coming. And in one way, of course... Uh, this was, you know, it would have been terrible, but this group were training to run things. So my not showing up was, okay, run, run it, make it happen, create the deep awake space between you, find the big love, make this connection work, make this ceremony powerful, uh, working out between you. So I was in with Deb for long 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 time in hospital uh, in the emergency procedures making sure she was okay and and she was and she is just so that anyone who know, you know it's, she's fine well she's not fine she's recovering um, but she's recovering well uh, and I reached a point where I could come back and, and other people could look after her while I finished off the retreat on the Sunday and then literally left the retreat back to the hospital and there for hours and hours and hours looking after Deb and straight Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from then on. So I'm telling you this story because it's what's been happening to me and it's been pretty full on. And But also because I really, what did I learn from this? Well, I think the first thing I want to say is that with most things I learn, it's rarely these days I learned da 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 and something I can just say in words, actually. What I, it feels like what I, I learned through experience. I learned through going through life. And I, I suspect we're all like that. What I learned was I went through that experience of being pulled. Now, I, it was a both and too far. <laughs> it was the big both and for me. You know, I, I talk about in paralogical philosophy, embracing both this and this. And I was pulled between this very personal mm, concern and, and attention to health and body and, and, and the grittiness of, of life. And also this sublime sharing of deep awake, not only sharing the deep awake with others, but, but empowering people to share the deep awake themselves with people I would never meet and how, how wonderful that was. So I am more convinced than ever that we can hold these two poles together. It's not always easy. But who said life should be easy? Where did we get that idea from? I don't know why. Life just isn't easy. Why do we ever think it could be? It's a it's one of the great new age myths that somehow if we were in the right space, life would always be easy. I don't think that's right or desirable. No, the stretch is not easy, but it's the stretch through which we grow. You know, there's an old phrase that people used to say that experiences are character forming. And it's a deep phrase because in a very deep sense, it's how our soul is formed. How we come into form is through the experience which mold us which are character forming in a very deep sense of character, who we are, who we, who we are expresses itself and finds itself through these experiences of, of being stretched by life. So, so if you're interested in my training and transformation retreat, you know, 
check it out on my website. There's lots of information there. It's a great program. It really is. And I'm doing my second one starting. My second program is going to start at the end of 2015. You know, if you've, you you just need to have come to a mystery experience retreat and want to be able to feel empowered to share this, you know, professionally in, in part of your general work, the work you do in other things, or just with friends, or just to feel like you can talk and convey this deep truth to others uh, in, in, a, in a natural, elegant, eloquent, uh, powerful way then this may be for you. So, big love.